The Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions of 1798 are some of the great forgotten documents of U.S. history. They were written by James Madison and Thomas Jefferson, respectively, and they spelled out what cumulatively we know as the doctrine of nullification. Sons, as I write you this letter, days past and days yet to come. Do you vote the bums out in the hopes that the new bums are going to say, you know, all this power that you've given us, we don't want it. You know, have it back. Well, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison both warned us that if the federal government ever became the sole and exclusive arbiter of the extent of its own powers, that power would always grow. The federal government is not our boss. We need to quit calling them federal laws. They are unconstitutional federal actions. They don't rise to the level of law. I'm an absolute firm believer in the notion of uh, 50 laboratories of uh, innovation. The Republicans and the conservatives have talked about the Constitution. You go to Lincoln Day dinners, it's about the Constitution, the Constitution this, restore the Constitution, we have, you know, oath to the Constitution. But all of a sudden, when it was their president and his war, they didn't care about the Constitution anymore. Don't ask for permission. Don't wait for permission. They're never going to give it. Start doing what you know is right and true, right in here. God is my witness, so be Almost five years ago, 10th Amendment Center was started by some guy in his apartment. And in the last two years, we've built up an organization of 60 people in over half the states in the union without any kind of funding whatsoever. This is a movement of the people and we've been so effective in the nullification movement that we're now under direct attack by the likes of Rachel Maddow and the establishment elite. But it's not just health reform. A conservative group called the Tenth Amendment Center has been pushing a lot of the anti-health reform stuff. They, but, but they put that in the context of nullification, and they're pushing for other kinds of nullification, too. When Nancy Pelosi was asked, you know, where do you derive the authority to regulate health care? Her response was, are you serious? Because now they presume that everything they do, they can do anything they want, unless you can point to a particular provision in the Constitution and Bill of Rights that says they can't do that particular thing. So they flipped it on its head. Rather than, than a, a few, like, like islands of power in a sea of rights, they presume a sea of power and little tiny islands of rights. So you have to go run to the Bill of Rights and, and see where they have a right to do something. If you do that, you're making a fundamental mistake. The great pride of the South Carolina secessionists was this guy, this guy with the teen idol good looks, Senator John C. Calhoun, the beloved pro-slavery politician who was South Carolina's greatest political export at that time. He had been Vice President of the United States, Secretary of State, Secretary of War, and as well as being a rabid proponent of slavery, John Calhoun, to that end, championed the cause of nullification. Nullification, the idea that states could and should refuse to follow federal laws they didn't like, that they thought went beyond the powers of the federal government. What was nullification used for? Well, it was, was it used to oppress minorities when it was introduced? No, it was used to fight for free speech and free trade and uh, against unconstitutional searches and seizures, against military conscription, against the fugitive slave laws. What has been the most lethal institution in history? for minorities, if not the centralized modern government, I mean it's modern state structure. I mean, you know, ask the uh, Armenians in Turkey, or ask the Jews in Germany, or the Ukrainians in Russia, or the Asians in Uganda, I mean the list just goes on and on of how large centralized states have oppressed people. States at any level can oppress people, they're states, but the more centralized it is, the easier it is for the powers that be to carry out these uh, these homicidal sorts of, of programs. And let's also remember in U.S. history, I mean, the incarceration of the Japanese in the early 1940s, that wasn't a state program, that was a federal government program. The war on drugs, which has decimated minority communities, is that a state level program? It's a federal program. But no progressive thinks this way, even though if they really believe in the human rights that they claim to stand for, they would say, let's nullify policies like that. We're moving the argument from here to here to here, ever closer to where we ultimately want to get. 
Three years ago, you never heard the word nullification. Now we're hearing it on major newspapers and major TV shows, so obviously we're having some impact. It's, it's going to be a, a tough road because before we can have a lot of successes with it, we have to persuade, we have to change public opinion, we have to persuade people that what we're doing is legitimate, it's morally legitimate, constitutionally legitimate, historically legitimate, that you know what they've been taught in seventh grade really is untrue, that federal supremacy is the way it's all supposed to work. We have to challenge that version of events and if people come to have a skepticism of that version of events and begin to see that our position has justice on its side, well then, once we've had this shift in public opinion, then I think we can expect some victories. As God is my witness, I'll be asleep, no.